Hello, I'm going to show you how to make some cider today. Um, I've got a new machine to do some scratting of apples, so looking forward to using that. And I'm going to show you how to press the apples and the whole brewing process. Um, but here's, here's some of the apples. I've got a couple of bags of these. That's a good friend. And a few other apples in this bag down here. So I would imagine there's about 50 pounds of apples, maybe 60. So before we get anywhere near brewing, what we're going to do is, uh, I've just got some water in here and I'll be washing the apples in, the, in this bath. This will have Camden tablets added to it and uh, I'll just put in probably three Camden tablets and uh, I'll show you that just now. And that's just really to uh, sterilise the apples a wee bit on the outside. I'm actually going to be adding a yeast, a cider yeast to the apples once I've finished uh, pulping them. But I want them to be uh, reasonably clean and you know if we've got any any muck or any bird muck or garden muck I don't want any of the nasties getting into uh, into the cider that's going to cause any problem to people. So uh, I'm just going to uh, make this sterilising solution up and it'll just help to uh, to control that somewhat. So that'll just uh, need to get mixed around a wee bit. I will get a spoon and get going with that. But basically the apples are going to go into this bath for about 20 minutes and that will just give them a good wash and just tumble them around. Then they'll go into this bath which is just clean water just to swill off any, any Camden tablets or any other dirt that there is. Now, once they come out of here they should be pretty clean and then I'm going to put them into the new scratting machine. Here is the new machine. Um, basically consists of a pretty big motor under here, a uh, stainless steel cotton blade here with, uh, with a, another blade here to keep things moving around, spinning around, and a seal, and the tube for feeding in the apples. So what I'm going to do, because it's the first time it's been used, I'm just going to go over it with a cloth with steriliser on it, no rinse steriliser, and uh, just to make sure that it's all fully clean and doesn't have any uh, loose paint or dust or anything like that on it. But uh, it does look very clean to be honest straight out of the box but we'll just do that anyway. Right so what I'm doing now is just transferring these uh, apples from the uh, from the sulfated bath, water bath, into the clean bath. They've been there long enough so uh, I'll just do that. What you need is a good mix of apples, all sorts of different shapes and sizes, different varieties that's all good and even if we've got stuff like that there's a few outer bruises on it but no real insect damage or anything they're fine to go in to the mix of cider. You do want a good lot of cookers like these they're going to be really good for the flavour but uh, essential to have a good mix. A lot of these apples actually came from a friend down near Edinburgh so, um, interesting to see how those ones go. I've made some that came from around this area uh, and some from Yorkshire this year. So we'll just uh, see how they go. Right, that's the first batch ready to go in the scratter. Right, so here is the new scrapping machine reassembled. I'll just uh, give it a quick clean. It looks really good. Haven't over tightened the bolts because you have to remember the seal on it. I've switched it on, plugged it into the mains and there's a button, control buttons down here for on off but I'm just going to use the main switch. Uh, these, these apples are the ones that have been washed and, and through both baths and they're just sort of drying off now so I don't put too much water down the chute. So uh, I'm just going to switch it on and see how we get on. Ah, that's not a good start is it? Switching it on. Okay. okay, so you've got to switch it on at the main at this point. You see, it's really quiet machine at the moment, so we'll try signaling some apples. 
jam. There's a jam here. Yeah, another jam here look. So just a matter of scraping that out there. I think it probably just needs to be fed. Kept fed. <laughs> going straight in to the press. Well here I am, I filled up the, uh, filled up the, uh, the basket of the press um, and I'm just about to fold over the net there and you can see that the juice has already been running out there while I've been scratching the apples. The new machine is absolutely fantastic. That process took me hours before. So I'm just going to uh, continue with that. Let's make sure it's all folded in. Get as much of that off the dry as I can. It's still right to the capacity of the press there. And these have been soaking in water just to uh, make sure that they don't soak up too much apple juice. The chapel juice is uh, highly acidic. The, the result of this press will be the chapel juice is something like uh, 3.8 or 4 pH, which, as most people will tell you, is quite high acidity. Put these uh, blocks in now in a certain order. Well, the most important that they are the same thickness, so you get the pressure around evenly on the press. Um, put another two on. And we'll see how we go from there. And on the top piece. Oops. And the washer. Piece of press. Handle in. I'll show you the uh, 
the juice starts to pour out there now. I haven't even put any pressure on it yet. A good uh, sterilized bucket under here, which is actually the fermenter where it's going to ferment anyway. And then I can just start turning this on, and the juice will just fall out there. Let's put a head torch on so we can see a little bit more what's going on. Really getting a good flow of juice there. This is just a, a 12 litre press, so it's quite small in terms of uh, food presses, but uh, it actually does a very good job. It wasn't expensive. I must say, with, with this particular uh, scrapped apples, the, the juice is a lot, um, lot more sort of clear, more yellow. Whereas with the, uh, the pulp master, because it was waiting in the bucket for so long, it oxidizes quite badly and becomes uh, rather brown. It probably doesn't make any difference to the side because. The side I've been making has been really, really quite nice. The efficiency of the, the new pulper machine is way in excess of the pulp master because it's cutting it all to a nice even, uh, even size, I guess. And uh, you can see it already that it's coming through much nicer. I put three Camden tablets into the uh, into the bucket here, the fermenting bucket, because I do want to kill off anything that's in these apples as well. Um, I'm not going for a natural ferment on the apples. A lot of people do, um, I'm just not sure about that yet, I may do that later on at some point, but uh, for this brew I'm definitely going to go for killing off and adding a proper side yeast into it. So it's just a matter of keep doing this and then, and then we'll do another press until we've got all the apples done. Well, we can see there we've got uh, about one gallon, uh, maybe just a little over, and uh, that uh, that pressing is coming to the end now. It's been tightened down many times, um, and I think it's just about there. So that's uh, that's what we've got so far. Okay, well she's uh, finished now. Just a few drips coming out there, so uh, I'm just going to take the uh, cheese out. What's left at the end there is called the cheese. As a matter of dismantling the, the press. Oops, should bust that one by the looks of it. Push 
finish down a bit on the cheese. And there's our pressed apples. So they're going to go into the compost heap. Years ago they used to use this for all sorts of things. I see it's quite a hard disc and I suppose it looks like a round cheese and that's why they why it's called a cheese. But they used to use it for feeding pigs and chickens and stuff like that. So there we go, there's our first one. That's pretty good dry consistency. That's very, very good. Very pleased with that. I'm careful not to get any bits into the, the brew. Put this back on here. Put the hole over the spindle. Oops, that's not right. <laughs> it's probably working in the dark. Right, so the hole goes, the spindle goes through the hole. back and just spread it out again ready for the next batch which actually I've already got some straight here which is from the remaining bucket load from before so I should pour that one straight in so here we go after a long night of pressing and scratting which has been absolutely superb I've got about uh, about 19 litres of apple juice, so uh, that's pretty good. So I'm quite pleased with that. So I worked out we had about uh, 72 pounds of apples in total. It's, it's got four Camden tablets in it now, so I'll just let it uh, sit overnight um, and that'll sterilise everything. And then tomorrow I shall pitch the yeast and put some nutrient in, I'll check the pH and we'll see and check the gravity as well so um, we'll see what we do with that tomorrow well here's the cider that we uh, managed to get extracted last night so I was quite pleased with the volume it's a good 19 litres of about four and a quarter gallons maybe a little bit more what I'm going to do now is I'm going to test the pH and I'm going to test the uh, the gravity of the, the cider and see if we need to do any corrections on it. Um, I'll then put some additives in that we need for fermentation and show you how to get that underway. First of all I'm going to test the uh, specific gravity with this hydrometer. So just a case of uh, drop it in at the top there and give it a little spin round. And we should be able to see the, the value on there quite clearly. Yeah, it's coming out about 1050, which is uh, pretty good. You can see there that the uh, specific gravity, the original gravity, is about 1050 on the hydrometer. So that's pretty good. I tend to like it to be about uh, 1045 for cider. So I'm going to add a little drop of water to that. Not too much. Right, so I've got uh, a pint of water there. I'm just going to check that again, make sure it's absolutely right. Yes, yeah, so we can come down a little bit. Just add in one and we'll see how we get on with that. We'll need to give it a stir. All, all this equipment has been sterilised just before I'm using it. So just making sure it's, uh, you do need to make sure it's sterile before you start. Right, let's just try that now. And that's at 10.45, I just added one pint of water. Right, what I'm going to do now is test the, uh, the pH um, of the, uh, the, the cider. So uh, I've got this little meter here, which is really quite good. Switch it on. Uh, 
this is a, a solution of um, a buffer solution and it should give me a pH value of 6.86 which uh, it did do the last time I used it and we're at around 6.9 at the moment so that's very close to the 6.86 which we're trying to measure so that's in deionized water and then you have the, uh, the buffer powder and store it so that gives me a good calibration on this uh, this machine. This is just some tap water which used to clean it and rinse it and then I will actually just try this straight into the cider so here we go, we'll just try it straight into the cider I'm just going to hold it in there for a little bit and straight away we're getting a reading of uh, 3.4 pH 3.4 Right, you really want the, the pH to be about uh, between 3.4 and 4.2. So this, uh, this juice I've got is slightly acidic for that. So I'm going to put in a little correction called precipitated chalk. And uh, this is this pretty good stuff. Uh, I'm not going to put in too much. I'm going to put in about, uh, about three teaspoonfuls into the batch and stir it in and that will reduce the the uh, the acidity level let's give it a scatter in I'm just going to put a couple in actually I've put in two teaspoonfuls of the precipitated chalk uh, and we'll see how we get on with that we'll give it a stir in now and let it react for a little bit and essentially that will just react with some of the acid and uh, reduce the pH a wee bit. So I'll just leave that for about 10 minutes and uh, see how we get on. Right, that's the uh, the pH at about 3.55, 3.6. So it's about 3.5. So I might put another spoonful in, but I'm going to do that at the end of fermentation, if at all. I'm going to see what it tastes like at that point. Okay, so what I have here is uh, pectolase enzyme and you need to add this to ensure clarity to your cider at the end. If you don't add this you won't get clarity. Um, it also breaks down the sugars so they're in fermentable state. Um, so it's good stuff. So you need to mix it with some just some hot water, some, some lukewarm water and you put in a level teaspoonful per gallon. So that's going in now. That's fine. I'm also going to add some of some of this. I'm going to add some of this which is uh, wine tannin. I'm just going to put in uh, one large teaspoonful. Quite colourful stuff this. You can add more of this at the end. This this gives you a, a flavour like, um, like you get when you're drinking tea. It's best described as that. And uh, give it a good stir in. Both of those. Uh, 
And now I'm going to add some. Uh, I'm going to add some yeast nutrient. I'm now adding yeast nutrient. Now this needs a level table teaspoon per gallon. So approximately four of those. It tends to be a bit lumpy, so I'll just break it up a bit. Another half, I would say. stir around and that will uh, help the, the yeast to get off to a very good start. Puts more nutrients in there than there may already be. I'm just going to uh, test the temperature of the cider before I uh, pitch the yeast. So, okay, it's at 15 degrees centigrade. So 14.9, 15. That's that's okay. Um, I'm going to pitch the yeast and then I'll put it, this entire vessel into the airing cupboard where it'll be at about 22 or thereabouts. temperature wants to be really no higher than 25 and greater than you really want it to be 15 or above. Okay, okay so what I'm going to do now is pitch the yeast which is a cider yeast you can buy this online from blue shops. So I'm just going to cut off the top and I'm just going to drop it in on the top. It's going, to be, it's going to be stirred around anyway so it doesn't really matter. And that should get away nicely now. So our starting gravity has come down to uh, about 10.45. And we've got all our additives in that we need. Just pitching the yeast there. And that should start fermenting. You should certainly see that fermenting within 24 hours. What we're doing now is seal it up with this with the lid. Put in a, a fermentation airlock. It's been sterilised. I often find that with these buckets, that they don't work anyway. They don't seal good enough. So, but it doesn't matter too much as long as you're keeping the bulk of stuff out of here. When the fermentation's on, the CO2 that's produced will protect the uh, the cider anyway, and uh, it's highly unlikely you're going to get some bad stuff in there. And everything's been done as it should have been done. So we'll see how that goes now. Well, here is the cider sitting in the uh, airing cupboard and it's uh, fermenting quite well now. Let's have a little look at it. It's been in here for uh, four days now, five days. And you can see that uh, fermentation has gone really well and I think the bulk of the fermentation has, has is finished but uh, it's looking good we'll just leave it for another few days right so that's uh, that's how I make the cider and uh, it'll really ferment for about two weeks now um, and then it's a matter of uh, just bottling it um, and to bottle it I will put in uh, about a teaspoonful per bottle a 500 ml bottle 
of sugar and that will give you a nice secondary ferment in the bottle. Leave it in a warm place for a week, um, at, like an airing cupboard, and that will be sufficient for the fermentation to be carried out. And then leave the cider for at least a month. Um, three months is better if you can keep it that long. And what you should get is something like this, which uh, is, is drinking very nicely now. This is this season's cider. Um, I made it with some apples that I got from a good friend in Yorkshire and uh, it's really superb stuff and I'll just get the dog hair off there <laughs> but uh, it really is nice and clear um, and a very pleasant drink. Cheers!